Okay. So, you do this um, instruments and then we also can develop software to plan the surgery in three dimensions. It is now possible to take a CT scan of the patient's leg, convert the CT scans into a 3D model, use a 3D model to plan the cuts, exactly where you will cut and so on, transfer that information onto maybe an application or take a printouts or make a 3D model of the joint or the cut part and all that and give to surgeons so they will implement exactly what was planned on the computer. It further increases the probability of more accurate surgeries. Okay. So finally, what we did was to put together a host of technologies. We use CAD, we use simulation, both kinematic simulation, dynamic simulation, stress simulation. Okay. We use manufacturing simulation. At some point, we use casting process to make the joints. But then we found the casting was not very reliable. We switched to machining process. There also machining path simulation. And eventually, after all the things are done, the inspection using a 3D scanning and comparing 3D scanned object or component with the original CAD model. So, you can use a lot of these technologies to make sure that you can get the things right. Okay. And uh, of course, we get newspaper coverage very nicely. This is just one of the many coverages which says that it holds out hope. Okay. And you will see that a lot of papers do cover technologies developed in IITs and IAC, saying that some new innovation is there. It hopes to change the future and things like that. But then you very rarely see that it's actually changed the life of someone. So we didn't want to stop here. Okay? We want to go beyond and say that let's go beyond hope and let's show that it actually can change the life of people. So fortunately for us, uh, Dr. Chidambaram's office, uh, who had funded the phase one of the project, they came back and said that why don't you guys actually go ahead and put the joint in human body, patient's body, and not just do a theoretical R&D project for that. And they release, uh, in fact, a larger amount of grant to do what is called as a clinical studies or clinical trials. Clinical trials means you are actually going to put in human bodies. Now, that sounds easier than done because there are a lot of checks and balances before you are actually go into human clinical trials. You need to do what is called as a complete study protocol. How exactly are you going to do that? You have to put what is called as a inclusion and exclusion criteria. What kind of patients are you going to recruit? What kind of patients you will not recruit? Okay. Which hospitals will do that? Which doctors will do that? What is the exact procedure for doing that? What will you do if something goes wrong? What about insurance for the patients? Okay. Training manuals. And uh, then we actually manufactured first lot, second lot, uh, actual lots to put into that. This is the actual photograph of the surgical team getting prepared in the hospital. Uh, by this time, Dr. Manish Agarwal had shifted to Hinduja Hospital. And uh, so, we have to take permissions from the government of India, it is called DCGI, uh, Drugs Controller General of India. And you also need to take permission from the what is called as the ethical institutional committees of the hospitals itself. And uh, that is the actual 27th April the early this year. The first surgery using the Indian knee joint happened in the hospital. You see Dr. Manish Agarwal here, that is the team which you see in the photograph is the team from the NFTC Hyderabad. They came down because they were so excited after so many years all the manufacturing, finally it is going to be going into someone's human body. Okay? And then post-op surgery, which you can see, the entire, there is no femur, there is no tibia, part of the tibia. It is all replaced by the artificial processes. Right? Can you imagine how many days after surgery? Second day after surgery. Okay? The patient is actually walking on his own feet without any crutches. Can you make out which leg? Because you saw L in the picture, <laughs> in the x-ray. <laughs> Pretty natural, right? Okay. That's the first surgery which happened and we were all thrilled. And then second surgery happened very quickly within a month of that. Again, you can see the entire, knee, entire process is uh, assembled on the thing. And the tumor, big tumor again removed and entire uh, gap reconstructed with this uh, knee joint. Again, you can see very clean, very clean lines. You can see very beautifully the going into the bone perfectly centered, right? From outside, you cannot make any difference about the shape of the leg. And, and by the way, the natural, some of the muscles are retained. So, the joint is inside, you preserve the muscles, you preserve the blood vessels and nerves. Nerves also, otherwise, how are you going to operate the leg? And then you are going to put the whole thing back and seal the whole thing. These are nothing but your uh, sutures. So, what about the relation with the kneecap? Kneecap is still there and kneecap glides onto the patella. The kneecap is, this is the kneecap for you? And it glides onto the patella just like a human 
natural human uh, knee joint. Some are lost because of tumor, because along with the tumor, some of some parts are taken out. So I won't say this leg is hundred percent as strong as the uh, other leg, which is maybe good, but the loss may be as as little as ten fifteen percent of of it, which is good enough. So this you can see the patient now again after two or three days after surgery walking. Weight of the about a kg, about one kg. It is little heavier than the human body. Maybe it's about you can say twice, uh, almost twice you can say. Yeah. But compared to the entire leg weight, the incremental weight of the leg is not more than maybe five ten percent. Our leg is pretty heavy. They can almost uh, sit squat on the on the thing. If you remember, it's about one hundred fifty degrees. so just to compare with the imported knee joint okay uh, imported knee joint does not have this much flexion they say you have to sit sit only on chairs mostly it is 90 or 100 degrees imported knee joints this can go up to 150 degrees number 1 and we give this beautiful little bit of that movement okay because of which uh, it won't the stem will not take shear stress and break eventually so this takes a little bit of it's little tight because it's not yet uh, put on the machine and these are the components which i can change i can remove this component put it directly onto that i get a shorter one but if tumor is large i can put a larger one of this middle part and i can build up the whole thing and i can change this small uh, medium condyle can go with a small uh, it's called tbl tray and vice versa and so on mix a mix and match i can do so what is the material for the uh, so i mentioned to you this is cobalt chromium this is this is titanium this is also titanium now okay This is also cobalt chromium. Uh, no, now we're making out of titanium. This whole thing, and this is your ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So you don't put metal to metal movement. Movement should never be metal to metal. It is moving on a polymer. And there's an axle here. As an axle is where our design innovation came. We are patenting that. And uh, even axle is surrounded by a poly bush. So again, there is no touching or contact between metal to metal. And if there's no other adverse, usually they go by adverse patients reporting. patient says i have pain is increase or something is happening for example the imported joints there was no shaped poly like that this whole thing can rotate freely so patients are very uncomfortable standing on their feet they would say no no i want crutches someone should hold me and all that because this naturally stops nicely you saw the patient walking this patient walked with a walker the previous version could walk without a crutch also and that's the three culprits yeah it happened because we three hung on for the the whole whatever 15 years Okay, so without these people, I would not have gone further. In fact, Bala, Bala, Dr. Bala on the left side, he is one who is taking the actual punishment, actually taking the lead, manufacturing that, and so on. So I only started that. We didn't give up. India sometimes it's very easy to give up because there are always obstructions. I haven't told you about all the obstructions we had in the project. It will take you two hours to talk about all of them. Lot of frustration, lot of obstructions, lot of times, but you never thought of giving it up. you always say no let's keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing even now 100 patients are going to be you know operated only two are over across five hospitals across the country there are 10 orthopedic surgeons who are going to come in and they have been trained to do this and like you know and basically then there will be the next stage that will be the pilot right 100 will be a pilot and there will be the next stage of large scale implementation you know professor ravi did mention about a very good thing which happened in all this is both the manufacturing the nftdc and at professor ravi's lab is called the betic lab now much more you know large scale innovations are happening and you know professor ravi will come back again and talk about all the other large scale innovations how he is building entrepreneurs how he is building you know biomedical innovations uh, and how he you know conducts the hackathons you know all that you know will come uh, again in the next session so uh, we cannot insert a screw from outside because there are chances of infection we cannot open up to place another Uh, module inside too yes. because that's also a very big process. Yes. So uh, can we calculate the average knee movement per year for children and insert the lever in the knee movement? So as per the knee movement per year, the good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Increases. I know what you're saying. It's a good idea. And now we have since uh, you showed the manufacturing and die molding <coughs> machines in the beginning. So now we have die molding machines that can go up to the accuracy of 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter. Sorry, millimeter. we saw it in last few classes so if you can come up with a mechanism which automatically grows yes. with the movement is what you're talking about yes. it That's can it. be paired with an application like uh, google fit and all which tells how many steps are remaining to increase by how much 
which children can use to like grow. Or you can tell them quota. The quota for this year is, you know, five lakh steps. Uh, because every children get puberty at different points, so uh, okay. that also. They can always go a little more, a little less, depending on how much you are growing. I think it's a good idea. And sometimes growth happens in, in spurts. Growth is not always uh, uh, uniform. So I've not heard about anyone thinking about something like that. I told you the two mechanisms which already exist in the market. Uh, definitely worth uh, thinking about. So chase it. And I'm there with you, right, right behind you. Do it. Yeah. So for the two Professor B.R.B.'s presentation, let me show some very, you know, interesting interventions from design. And all of you are, you know, design students and you're doing applied ergonomics right now. So let me show you some parts of that from a real case study. So here, like, you know, for example, what would a designer do in all this? So I was, of course, part of the team, you know, always supporting and being there in the meetings and, you know, during the building of the prototypes and for the suggestions and critics. But a very important aspect is, if you look at the total number of components, how would the do doctor who is operating understand all the components? How would each component fit each other? What type of fixtures and what type of, you know, aids will I give him to understand how these things go into one another? Right? Because he's going to be a new doctor, right? An orthopedic surgeon will just get this prosthesis and he has to operate upon. He may do some training, he may do some, you know, manual. You can take this forward. So, for example, we did talk about, you know, all the aspects, how many parts are there. Can you see all the parts? The femoral stem, the femoral collar, different stems, right? Different heights. Because the cancer is at different levels. So you have different heights. So here you need a stem to attach this to this uh, femoral stem. And this is a femoral extension. To attach this to this, we need an extension. And this extension also different sizes, depending upon what the, you know, conditions are. And then, you know, the most interesting part is the circlip. After assembling the, you know, circlips, which you've seen moving parts with a round spring-like, uh, you know, uh, uh, grips. So these are the circlips which get attached. And these are the two bushes which go in. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. This is the very, very high end engineering polymer, which is specially designed to, because it's very human friendly uh, point of view. And this particular thing is again made of that because it's a rotating part. And then you have the central pin, which is sitting in between. Remember the, uh, you know, it could move. So this central pin is oblong. Okay. And this is the lock to prevent it from uh, moving, the ML lock that has to be inserted first. This is the tibial poly, it's a polymer between the two joints. Then we have the, you know, the like uh, aspects of the tibial tray in which this poly sits and the tibial stem. So now I'm going to tell you about the, you know, next phase. What happens with so many parts? Is it too complex for the doctor? Is it very easy for the doctor? Is it too complex for the operation theater? This is a mega operation. So what happens? You have tremendous amount of preparation. So the whole team prepares with the, you know, in line, as soon as the doctor says you have to give that type of thing on all of them are autoclaved and, you know, sterilized. Different types of, you know, like uh, instruments. Some instruments are common operating instruments and some of them are instruments for fitting your prosthesis and those are called ornamentarium. Ornamentarium is the name given to the tools which are used to fix the in pro, uh, the processes and that is given by whom? The ornamentarium is sent by whom? The, the manufacturer of the process. So he will send you the kit along with the tools, the processes along with the tools. So this is the you know, operation table happening and these are what are the trays with all our ornamentarium. These are called dummies. Very interesting within the ornamentarium you have dummy pieces to check. So there are dummies to put and check and then you are opening the sterilized processes component. This is the collar to open the test sterilized and then use it because that's very expensive. So dummies can go to sterilization again. Okay. So look at the, the, that's the reamers and all the tools which you see over here. The drills and you can't drill the bone at one go, right? You need to drill it slowly and you need to drill it at the right dimension because your the stem should go in and lock, though you use something called the bone cement. The stem goes in, it's like, you know, carpentry and cementing. There's no difference. But here, most of the materials used for all these purposes are very advanced. So there's a bone cement and you ream accurately, put the bone cement and put your stem, the stem integrates with the bone. 
this is all you know the study i'm showing you is done by an md student of mine who joined me in the studio worked me worked with me for one year to support this whole process is development and taking it to the pilot production we are going to 100 numbers right we have to train five doctors across five hospitals to get this work done how will i tell them how to do the operation whereas uh, banish agarwal who is our doctor with us for the last 14 years he knows it very well at the back of his hand you just give him the process he will quickly you know assemble and put but the, for a new orthopedic surgeon you need to tell everything about all the aspects and how will you do that so these painstakingly you know the taramchari our project associate would sketch every component and every aspect and create a manual for the doctor he talked about every part of the tool being used how the tool is being used how the ornamentarium is being used how will you put how will you mallet how will you cement what will be done when he created the complete journey for the doctors till the stitching back so this is how the whole process goes in and this is the step by step process so now we need to also design the box for our product right because we are designing a new processes so we have to design the ornamentarium box and the packaging for our uh, product so we studied what type of sizes we are getting what type of components we are getting these are the initial ideation sketches then the surgeons insights were taken very clear surgeons were very clear that you know like unless and until the basic things of the products like usability packaging and handling are clearly defined and finalized the product can be granted a medical approval it can't be granted a medical approval till you have all these things clear you're looking at a world processes so how can it be implemented what happens what about packaging you use becomes very very critical in the whole journey and doctors and surgeons will actually use the instruments in a non case for understanding the basic look and feel and understanding the handling of the instruments so for this you know what we did we bought a mannequin cut the leg made holes in the mannequin and we got the doctors to operate on that mannequin as all this idea was from our designer dr ramchari and the doctors were amused and they were very happy because they never did that before and they found it very easy to learn and this whole workshop was done in nftdc when they were all visiting them and they all checked how things are happening because here you can you know play with the leg you can cut the leg you can you know put all the things inside and it was very open and it looked that's the beauty of design see we do the things which are the trials the theatrical aspects doing a mock up study and that we fed in and then nftdc was extremely happy that they could point out a lot of issues of you know some pin not being how will you adjust the clip from the back it was very difficult so can we have one side clip rather than both sides clip all these suggestions were coming in after you actually did something called operation using dummies so now looking at the preparation for the surgery so when you have a theater operation theater it's a very complex phenomenon of people around you there are anesthetists there are you know multiple uh, help uh, helps with the doctors have there are senior doctors there are junior doctors there is the main operation surgery and you know and there are these people whom the prosthesis manufacturer sends because they are they know their prosthesis well so they are those people also inside the operation theater this is the first time we got to know that even the manufacturer sends his person there to stand there to get the things done so we were just you know we made all these components of see where all you'll keep what the tools the reamers the trials the dummy trials and then here we are the ornamentarium tools and those are how the doctors will be all around the patient uh, to get the operation done and there is this ornamentarium assistant so these expert and this assistant come from the manufacturer so what type of study did we do we said we have to make this box very user friendly right that's our job as a designer i want to make everything easy for the doctor so very clearly queer division about off table on on table tools what is this off table you know assemble some of the components there and give to the surgeon and he would put that in put inside the you know bone and then you know he will have some tools to put the circlips to put the clips inside to put the sockets inside all that will happen at them so that is the on table and that's the off table so he he made a division so that's easy for the doctors and the, for the assistant to pick up see how nicely it has been done and then he packaged the product so this easy to pick up look at the packaging these are the clips which go and lock the pin which is being being used and there's two extra clips if the clip falls down it has a special tool to hold this like this open it push it in and leave it so because it's spring loaded what happens is every chance that it made it made go away so there's extra two given which are completely sterilized which are available for the doctor 
and designing of the clip holder and how it will work also is part of the you know our material design and we created the grips and what type of openness we need to have what type of profiles we need to get and all these things were done and every part the on table and the off table as it's each tool was considered taken and a process was defined of what will happen remember there was a there was a picture board to show the process of operation now there's a picture board to show how each part is being worked upon and that made it very very easy and useful and then again the surgical hammer what type of load comes how heavy should you make the surgical hammer because you were tapping it once it can damage the whole body bone for example so you need to really have very very right type of weight for the right type of application because you are sending the stems inside by actually hammering he made this you know aspects of viewing locating and holding you have to see and you have to pick up like for example the sizes you don't need to catch it you know you, you just see the size because there's a large text over there small large you can pick up so this this particular is the locating that you take them and put them in the location and then this is about actually handling him so these are the three icons he developed to very make it very clear that which of them you're not touching which of them you're placing the right location which of them you're opening see it's a very big risk if you open three uh, three sizes unnecessarily you lost uh, the sterilization aspect your repacking aspect is very very expensive Okay, so we we talked about the tibial side, the femoral side. See very clear because there are two sides of the table: the bottom side and the top side, and then the common tools which are going to be used. And every component was considered, and what type of activity will happen was you know taken care of, and that's how the whole you know operation uh, planning was done. So that's the whole journey of the design intervention of how I as a part of the support team. So there's a core team, and there's a support team. Like me, there were a lot of people in the support team. and then there was this larger enterprise wide team so the teaming was very interesting here the first team consisted of the three professors who worked day and night and their team members there are at least four to five team members professor b ravi had at least 10 to 12 mtech students and four phd students whose contribution was there in this research contribution so we have a whole large team of support structures also behind all this uh, taking things forward okay so this this closes our you know uh, like uh, understanding of how you know uh, uh, how we need to really work across domains across disciplines and without each other's strength and input this product would have never come out and the biggest uh, you know credit is also to the principal scientific advisors office which is the at the government level it's the prime ministers uh, you know they directly report to the prime minister the principal scientific advisors office and their office was constant support all these years with the type of funding which came in was very very large without the funding this type of activity cannot have happened so with that uh, aspect now we got everything is first time there was no process in the country so first time the dg uh, you know the controller gave approval for this that was the first time because to doing first time they took eight or seven meetings to get this cleared